I want to use my cell phone this morning as an example in what I want to share with you. I do believe that every person that is here has got a cell phone. You do have one? Yeah. How many of you still use that Nokia 6510? You remember that one? It was half a brick size. I think, did it still have an aerial? Was it was the Motorola that had, that, that had the aerial? Yeah. I remember watching a movie, um, The Hillbillies. Now, you, you, you won't know um, what Hillbillies are. You're from Nelspray. Um, Nelspray's way too up class for, uh, for you to understand what Hillbillies are. But I remember these people moving out of the country to a city, the Hillbillies. I, um, please don't watch it. I don't know if there's any foul language or anything in it, but I, I just remember this, this family, they wanted to buy a house and they sat in a limousine and the agent took the phone, but it was a cordless phone in the, in the limo, and, 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 and she phoned. And one of the hillbillies punched the other one and said, she think we are stupid, that thing don't even have a cable. <laughs> <laughs> but we have technology, there's so much advanced technology today. I mean, it's amazing that I can, I communicate with people internationally and I can send Peter Swart a message right now and within seconds he will reply out of the United States of America. That's amazing. I mean, because of technology. But I want to use, I, I, I titled my sermon this morning, If Heaven Had an App Store. You know what an app is? You, a, a phone is absolutely useless if you don't use the apps that's available. Now the thing about an app, you, you all know WhatsApp. You do know WhatsApp. I remember watching this young man that designed the app WhatsApp. And when he sold it to, I don't know which company he sold it to, I don't know if it was Apple or either one of the companies. He grew up in poverty and um, uh, he moved to the States from out of, I think it was out of one of the African countries. And he designed this app and he, and he said one of the things that he wants with this app is that people should be able to phone their family without any charge because he couldn't communicate with his family because he was in poverty. And um, one thing about WhatsApp on your phone is that you can't change the app, but you can make use of the function <coughs> within this app. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. A cell phone has got an operating system. Now this one operates with Android. This is an Android operating system. Means if Android is not working on this phone, this phone is useless. No matter what the amount is that you pay for it, or it's just useless if, if you don't make use of the operating system. Now we as human beings, as the body of Jesus Christ, I want to use it. I don't want to be disrespectful to towards uh, uh, God or towards us as a human race, but I want you to look at your phone as an example, as a replica of who we are. You see, there was an old app called the law of Moses if you wanted to do anything and be successful you had to download the law of Moses but luckily there's not a single person seated here that's a that's a natural born Jew anybody that's a natural born Jew whose mom is a real Jew and whose dad's a real Jew anybody here yay Georgie a real Jew wow okay all right, but sorry for Georgie this morning, but none of us was under the law of Moses. God never ever gave the law of Moses, the 613 laws to any Gentile nation or a Gentile person or an individual. Never. They were never obligated to uphold all these laws. Never. You know what is so strange? is that before the cross there was no requirement even when Jesus was on the earth and he had a minister to people I mean the woman at the well who had five husbands and is living with guy number six I mean her reputation speaks for itself so Jesus never said to her you want to be blessed you need to, you need to install the law in your life and then apply the app he never said that to her. He actually said to her that he'll give her water to drink and if she drinks his water, there will never be a thirst in her ever again. 
And then if, he'll, if she eat the bread that he gives, she will never hunger again. Her life, her, her history, it, she's actually the perfect person that you should preach adultery to. Or one of those laws, but Jesus never gave her a law. None of the people that was ever called a person of great faith in, the, in biblical times was a Jew. None of them. You know why? Because the Jews operated under the app called law. And the system kept shutting down. It was always failure. Trying to uphold these laws. They just couldn't do that. So, the law, the new law that I'm under, I'm under a law. And I've preached on that before. I'm also under a law. But I'm not under the law of Moses. I'm under the law of life in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Repeat that with me. The law of life in Christ Jesus. Lord, 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 Jesus. Romans 8. What the law could not do, God did. <coughs> By sending His Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. But in Romans 8 says that um, there's no condemnation for those who are Christ. in Christ. Alright, so let's take our operating system. Is Christ. So the operating system that makes, that gives sense to my life is Christ. Without Android, this thing is useless. Without Christ, I'm useless. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to talk to you about, I'm going to touch on the fruit of the Spirit this morning. Everybody say fruit, not fruits. Fruit. It's nine fruit, not nine fruits. It's not plural, it's singular. It's an enkele, it's in fruit. <coughs> My nege component Galatians 5 verse 22 but the fruit 22 and 23 but the fruit of the spirit is read that love now let's before, before we continue reading that how many of you have ever felt condemned because you, you struggled to love somebody it's easy last night in any boss a guy was sitting behind me and he smoked in an illegal zone and, and, and I really suffered to love this guy. I felt I felt I wanted to apply the fivefold ministry. Yeah, that's what I felt. So while this guy was smoking my nostrils into kazoo pipes and, and I mean I was little, I eventually turned around and, and I rebuked him, but not in love. Yeah. It's easy to love those that are good to you. I mean it's easy to love those that are nice and that love you back. But have you ever felt condemned because you didn't love somebody? Now you know what? If you operate under the, the old covenant system, if you want to run your life on the app law, man, you'll struggle to love. You'll struggle. You continuously fail. But you see, we are spiritually no longer flesh. So when you are in Christ, the operating system is spirit. If you're not in Christ, the operating system is flesh. Now it's easy to, to manipulate my flesh in order to be obedient to certain laws. It's, it's, it's possible. I mean, I can say no to an affair. By simply based on discipline in my flesh. I can do that. Or fear for my wife. <laughs> yeah, say the nine more. <laughs> the shy is sick to me. God's got grace, I don't. Yeah. So you be to pray for her? That God will replace the operating system in her life. Yeah. <laughs> so, the fruit of the Spirit is... Love, come on, joy, joy. joy. peace, peace. long-suffering, long that means being married for 25 years now. <laughs> <Elma. laughs> How long have you been married, Uncle Alan? 60. Si 60 years. That's seriously long-suffering. Yeah. <laughs> long-suffering. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. Alright. But the sad thing about the fruit of the Spirit is, is that 
I was always told to have the fruit. And I, was, I always felt that it was my responsibility to grow the fruit in my life. And I found myself so often failing because I simply tried to operate, I tried to produce this in my life through upholding law. Good, do good, get good. But if you do bad, you get bad. And we are no longer living according to the flesh because we are in a new law called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. So I want you to repeat this with me. Say this, the law of sin and death is the law of Moses. You need to understand this. The law of the spirit of life in Christ, say this, is simply resting in what Jesus did. Now that sounds so mock right? It just sounds so easy. But uh, I want to touch on a couple of things. Like, for instance, what's that? You can't change the app, but you can use the app. How many of you ever made a group call on WhatsApp? How many of you have never done that? Raise your hand. All right, never. You can actually go on your video on WhatsApp and you can follow your brother and then you tap the little picture of a human with a plus on top and add another person to the call. You can add four people. You can talk with four people at once on that. Just because you didn't do that doesn't mean the app can't do that. And just because there's certain things that we don't see in our now doesn't mean it's not part of the app in our lives. Our operating system is Christ. In Him we are blessed and highly favored. Even though I might in a season in my life don't see, not see blessings or not feel the favor of God in my life. I am blessed and highly favored. Amen. Amen. Now, I was, while I was thinking of this, this, God gave me this title actually about three weeks ago already. I'm not sure. But, but when I was thinking about this and, and, and continuously thinking about this, I, I try to figure out what is the enemy's role in in the earth, in the church, what's his role? I strongly believe that the devil only wants the church to run the operating systems on two fundamentals, flesh and grace, spirit and flesh. I, 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 Paul writes and he says that we should not be entangled again in, 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 in a yoke of bondage. Let's go to verse 1 of this, of, this, um, of this chapter quickly. We just read this. It's Galatians 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. I'm going to say in the liberty. And in the Stand and the Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Now he's writing this to a church that understood what grace was. They understood grace. He actually ministered to this group of people and he ministered grace to them. But because Paul wasn't a full-time pastor of the Galatians church and he was traveling and he moved around, the enemy allowed people to come into the fellowship and bewitch the church. Think about this. You see, I've had encounters with Satanism in, 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 uh, in the past and we used to think if a guy walks into church with a pitch black clothing, that's a devil worshipper. But I mean, Carmen, the gospel singer, loves wearing black. Does color, a, color, a color can't make you a devil worshipper. I mean. But you know what I realized in the body of Jesus Christ? Is that if the enemy can manage to bring it to a place where you, you, you feel condemned because of mistakes you made. He entangled you again in a, in a yoke of bondage. And how did, how did the people that influenced the church bewitch the church? When you read Galatians, starting from verse 1, 2, 3, he says, Who has bewitched you? He's asking this church that was in grace. Asking this question. Wie het so I remember when back in the day when the people believed that somebody can walk into a church fellowship and they can they can 
place a spell or a curse on people and they can operate in the spiritual realm and darkness can basically then switch off the light apparently they thought that was to be bewitched but the apostle Paul says says who's bewitched you and he's asked, he asked him this question did you receive the operating spirit I'm talking about Holy Spirit did you receive the operating system through faith or did you receive it by applying the law? Calling that to be bewitched. Think about this. Have you, have you accessed God's operating system by upholding the laws of Moses? Or by simply trusting in what Jesus did? He's asking in this question in Galatians 3. Now, in Galatians 5, when he talks about the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, he says... We should stand in the liberty. So stand to stand fast, not to be moved. In this freedom that was given to us. Not a freedom to live a life that has got no purpose. Come on church. It doesn't mean that I can now go and steal money from people. And I can kill and I can sleep around and I can break every single r rule that I should have in my life. Simply because I am free. I stand in my liberty. That's a mistake people make. It was a freedom that we were set free. Not that we should be entangled in stuff again. But the stuff he's talking about. The yoke of bondage. He says, stand in this liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. I'm going to say Christ has made us free. Christ say it again. Christ made you free. Christ now you look your neighbor in the eye and say, nothing you can do can make you free. Nothing I can do can make me free. Christ made me free. Amen. But yet the enemy will come and he will try and introduce this new act to you called mixture. The mixture of, yeah, it's fine if you in grace, but remember you still need to uphold this and this and this and this principle. And then the mistake people make is believing that they can choose which one of the principles they want to uphold and which they don't want to uphold, and yet... If you, if you break one, you're guilty of all. Alright. Look at your neighbor in the eye and say, the law was never given to you. It was only given to Georgie's family. <laughs> Sorry, Georgie. You're going to take one for the team this morning. You chose the wrong Sunday to come to church. Now, now, now Paul writes, he says, verse 2, he says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now, one of the principles of the Old Covenant was circumcision, male circumcision. I don't have to explain what that is. You know what it is. But he takes that one principle and he says, if you be circumcised, remember it was part of, it was a sign of being part of the Old Covenant to be circumcised. Says, if you do that, then the app Christ will not work on your system. It will not. So if you are in Christ and your operating system is Christ, and then you think, but if I just do this, apply this one law, then you deactivate the functions of being in Christ in your life. You don't see profit out of that. There's a system shutdown. Failure. Verse 3, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Now the Apostle Paul makes this clear. If you, do, if, you, if, you, if you submit to just one of the laws of Moses, then you are obligated to uphold them all. Look into your neighbor's eyes and say, the law was not given to you. Never. It was never given to you. Never. We should guard our hearts against the enemy trying to, to install. Have you, have you seen these apps that they send you and you try and you upload this app like um, flashlight, for instance? You upload, the, upload this new flashlight and suddenly there's a whole lot of ads on your phone and things that pop ups and, and stuff that almost just, just attack your operating system. I mean, it happens to the church as well. 
He just sends you this information that, you know what, God wants you to, to do this in order to be in right standing with Him. And the moment you want to you install one of these apps, immediately the rest of the 612 pop up and wants to force you into going into the law, which Paul called to be bewitched. And what he's saying is that if you do that, Christ will not profit you. How many of you would love to start a business but not make a profit? Why do you start this business? I actually desire to go bankrupt. <laughs> no, you, when you start a business, you start it with, the, with this idea that you want to make profit. You can make a living. Christ was given to us so that there would be profit in your life. So that when you do the books at the end of, of, of your life, you can see that I've gained things and not lost things. Yeah, glory. I mean, Amen. I didn't lose certain things in my life the moment I installed Christ. Now we will still talk about this quickly on how to install certain things in your life. Now there's a part of being in Christ is just this app called salvation. It is the guy that is the author of WhatsApp. I make use of WhatsApp, but I didn't write the app. I didn't. I didn't design this app. And nothing I can do can alter. I can see a star, a one, two, three, four, five star rating on the app. But I can't alter the app. I can't. And I'm sorry to tell this to the church. You know this. But to the people on Facebook. You can't alter salvation. Amen. Now if I install WhatsApp on my phone, which I do have. You can curse my phone. You can say things about me in the spiritual realm. You won't be able to uninstall the app on my phone. I mean, come on church. And no matter what you say about me, you can't uninstall salvation in my life because you weren't the author of salvation. He was the author of salvation. I mean, come on, give him a praise. He's the author of this app. And this app, by the way, salvation, works by... Grace. So it's part of the entire algorithm of the design to be in the Spirit, to be in Christ. I am saved by grace. And then immediately when the enemy wants to bring an installation on my system, to, yeah, but you need to at least then just honor your father and your mother. So that your days can be lengthened. The moment I want to apply one of these apps, I, I am reminded that there's a complete resistance from the other operating system. The one that said, we are saved by grace through faith. Not through works. Works is upholding the law of Moses. My salvation didn't come through upholding what Moses said we should uphold. It came simply by faith. What is faith? Did you know that faith is not only fruit, Part of the fruit is also a gift. Come on. Faith is a gift, church. Freely given to you. The same way WhatsApp is freely available for you to install on your operating system. I see the operating systems are starting to work in this place. <laughs> but faith was given to you for free. All you have to do is just say, install. And then the thing will work by itself. You see, we were told to have faith. And we, should, we were told to grow in faith. And we were told to, to, to get more faith. And I remember the faith movement way back in, in church. It was just about faith. And then we would line up verse of scripture, even old covenant verse of scripture. That we had to quote and quote and quote and quote like parakeets. In order to keep the faith app installed on the system. And the moment I make a mistake, it's because you don't have faith. Or the moment we pray for a sick person and they die, oh, but you, it's because you don't have faith. I've got very good news for you, and I've got very bad news for you. The good news is, faith is already part of the package of the installation of Christ in your life. He believed on your behalf. Amen.